Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Finance Zone. The Queen's Gamut is a seven hour long drama about chess. Good luck selling that. Except it's so much more than that. It's a sprawling kaleidoscopic journey across continents from Las Vegas to Moscow. It dazzles us with 60s style and has so much to tell us about gender politics, drug addiction, depression, the Cold War, and much, much more, including business strategy. It's a beautiful, seductive, emotional story told with verve, confidence, and chutzpah to the point that our seven-hour mini-series about chess has become the most talked about drama of the year, watched by over 62 million Netflix accounts in its first month of release. That's the power of a good story. It's well worth finding the story of your business and products, because Steve Jobs was not just talking about the generic power of stories, something that is the leitmotif of Barack Obama also, but in the selling power of stories. Our story is the life force of our businesses. We should spend time sculpting it, editing it, and ultimately engaging people in it, does your business story stand up to scrutiny? Is it engaging enough, or does your customer just see your product as the equivalent of a seven-hour-long drama about chess? Today, we're going to be talking about four strategic business lessons you can take from the Queen's Gambit. Make sure you stay, as you do not want to miss out on this valuable information. Also, remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell. What can you learn from watching and playing a game of chess? The Netflix original miniseries The Queen's Gamut revolves around the game of chess. Set in the 1950s, the miniseries tells the story of a young girl named Beth Harmon. Beth, an orphan after a tragic car accident, discovers she has a penchant for playing chess after being taught by the janitor in a girl's orphanage. She quickly rises in the ranks across the nation, tapping into her talent and her journey to become the world's greatest chess player. It's not a journey that's without its setbacks. Over the years, Beth faces several struggles in and out of playing the game. However, she is determined to be victorious and to achieve the impossible. In many ways, Beth's journey has similarities to individuals becoming entrepreneurs. Loose lessons in entrepreneurship can be found throughout the miniseries if you know where to find them. Here are a few of my favorite lessons from The Queen's Gambit. Number 1. Be strategic with your next move. So said Winston Churchill. This is a truth born out of the Queen's gamut. Beth is a chess prodigy. It comes easily to her, and she breezes to the USA National Championship by the time she's 16, winning all her games to that point and gaining significant financial rewards and recognition. But in her biggest match to date, she loses and finds she doesn't have the emotional bandwidth to deal with failure in the moment. It's a scenario she's destined to repeat on the largest stage of all, and she falls short in her battle with Russian grandmaster and world champion Borgov. However, with age, experience, and hard work, she finally conquers her nemesis. And that's where we leave the story, content that life in the chessboard will continue to throw up triumph and disaster, but that our heroine finally has the tools to deal with whatever is thrown at her. Every move in the game of chess is built on strategy. Throughout the miniseries, Beth is able to visualize a chessboard on the ceilings of the rooms she's in and plan her next move by playing the game in her head. Don't get discouraged if the answer is no. Much like the game of chess, entrepreneurship takes a great deal of time, energy, and effort to succeed. Revisit existing goals. Consider if you still need to reach these objectives with your business or if you need to strategically plan to pivot in another direction. See where there's an opportunity to expand timelines. You may even break existing goals up into bite-sized pieces to reach your projected goals a bit faster and ensure that you are successful in these endeavors too. Number two, kick distractions to the curb. The reputation Beth Harmon has as a chess protege is nearly destroyed by her burgeoning habits for drinking and abusing prescription medication. I won't spoil too much of the miniseries or its ending, but Beth, with the help of close friends, is able to curb her dependency on these addictions and continue advancing as a chess player. When Elizabeth finally faces off against the ultimate grandmaster Borgov, she is faced with a dilemma. Beth's signature opening is the Sicilian defense the solid base she usually creates from which to play her buccaneering aggressive style. But Borgov is known as the master of the Sicilian. His track record proves that he almost always demolishes opponents that attempt this approach. This causes Beth much hand-wringing. She is racked with doubt in their first meeting. A chastening loss, she moves away from the Sicilian in an effort to catch Borgov off guard. It's an unmitigated disaster, accentuating the feeling that Borgov has her number. Nearly all entrepreneurs face some sort of distraction. 
These distractions don't even need to be destructive in nature. It can be as simple as reorganizing your email inbox again, taking multiple breaks from work to text friends, or procrastinating calling back a voicemail. The best thing to do in these situations is to take distractions, big and small, and kick as many to the curb as possible. Create to-do lists that will allow you to prioritize your work. Focus on making daily steady accomplishments. Find ways to minimize anything that can be a distraction to you. Close down the number of tabs you have on your desktop. Sit in an organized space where you only have the essentials on hand. And let family and friends know when you're working so they may give you the space necessary to succeed. Number three, pay tribute to mentors. Beth's entire life changes when she stumbles upon a janitor named Mr. Scheibel playing chess in the basement of the girls' orphanage. Mr. Scheibel teaches Beth how to play chess. He instructs her on the terminology and trains her on moves associated with the game. He later introduces her to a chess club teacher at the local high school who allows Beth to play at the school and mails her money to enter her first chess tournament. As the years pass and Beth becomes famous as a chess player, she is quick to remind members of the press that she didn't get there entirely on her own. It was William Scheibel who acted as her teacher and mentor. The mentor or mentors that an entrepreneur has play a pivotal role in their success. It's critical that mentees focus on how they may keep the mentee-mentor relationship thriving together. Whenever a mentee has the opportunity to shine the spotlight on their mentor, do it. Share the lessons they taught you that allowed you to succeed and give them a shout out by full name as often as possible. Number four, believe in your passion. In the Queen's Gamut, Beth Harmon is often a solitary figure. She's alone at home between games, alone in her hotel room as she concentrates on game practice, and alone as one of the few women to play chess against men. Beth loves to play chess. During an interview, she even muses that it's not necessarily a competitive game to play as much as it is a beautiful game. Beth's mother, abandoned by her husband, was deeply tormented, and we see her drive into traffic with an eight-year-old Beth in the back seat in the opening sequence. Alone, Beth is raised in an orphanage, which in an effort to raise good, obedient Christian children, perfect for adoption, keep their charges sedated. Beth soon becomes addicted to her daily dose of benzodiazepines and stockpiles them. A serendipitous encounter with a friendly chess-playing janitor provides her with a means of escape, both mentally, as she plays out chess games on her bedroom ceiling in a nightly hallucinatory state, and physically, as janitor Mr. Shabel develops her chess skills. Within 10 years, Beth is renowned grandmaster with a jet-set lifestyle. All this is to say it doesn't matter from where we start or even what obstacles we encounter, there is usually always a way our passion will out. Our passion has almost unlimited power to overcome. It has become a vastly overused word, in business especially. So before you trot out the phrase, we are passionate about widgets. Be sure that widgets burn your soul, drive you, grind you, and to jump into the very modern vernacular, provide you with your happy place. If that's your base, then your business can and will overcome because your passion endures. More often than not, the common complaint of an entrepreneur is feeling alone or that you are going it alone. The truth is you're not actually alone. An entire world comes alive when you love what you do. And so do you. Believe in what you're doing and acknowledge the beauty in it. It'll take you far. As we sum up, Elizabeth is an intuitive chess player. She's able to see the pieces move on the ceiling for heaven's sake. That approach is more than enough for her to win locally and even nationally, but she knows on the international stage she needs to study. She has always been drawn to her how-to chess books and magazines, but at an elite level, she needs insight into her opponents. She needs to know what they're going to do before they do it themselves. And that comes from extensive research, planning, and also mentoring. It's only once Beth undertakes this holistic approach that she's able to win at the top table. Many of us in business have started out armed only with a special product knowledge and our wits. Many of us have created a business plan and researched our market and tried to make strategic decisions for the growth. This might be an extremely scary time for your business. It might all be hanging on by a thread, but as Churchill encouraged us above, failure isn't fatal. This isn't checkmate. Good luck. Thanks for watching. While you're here, go ahead and click one of these two videos on your screen. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. See you there, and thank you for watching.